Hello, welcome to Supercat. This is our first live demonstration that we're bringing you today. I'm Nikki Yeoman and I'll be your host and I'll be joined by my colleagues later on during the show to answer your questions. Now, why today are we bringing you this event? Well, exhibitions have been cancelled all over the world due to coronavirus. This has impacted everybody greatly. But our engineering team has worked really tirelessly around the clock to modify and bring you the latest technology innovations on our vehicles. So we thought this would be a great opportunity today to bring you our high mobility transporter vehicle through this show. But not only that, we've got a great treat for you today at 10.30, we are bringing you the light roll vehicle. And at 2pm we have got our electric all-terrain mobility vehicle and our optionally manned variant will be demonstrated to you. It's not too late to actually book your tickets. Go to supercat.com forward slash news events forward slash events. And we encourage you to get involved today. Just click on the YouTube link and you'll see a comments box. Please write in your questions and we will endeavour to respond to you at the end of the show when my crew will be with me to answer those questions. But if we don't endeavour to get back to you today, my team will get back to you within seven to ten working days. Please also join us live on our Twitter feed. Go to at Supercat Limited and use the hashtag Supercat Live. If you're watching this on Catch Up or you have a commercially sensitive question, please do email us at info-uk at supercat.com. Now that's all that's left for me to say to you today is sit back and enjoy and now I'll hand you over to Roger. Hello, I'm Roger Baker, the PDS Manager for Supercat. My role involves the support and updates and publications and modifications for the in-service HMT vehicles. For those of you who don't know, Supercat is an engineering company based in Devon with an ever-growing global footprint. The DNA of developing high mobility vehicles for specialist customers has continued to run through the company since the early 80s. Supercat first entered the defence sector when the founders Nick Jones and David Clayton competed in a funded mobility competition. This competition was derived out of difficulties found by the UK MOD during the Falklands conflict. The competition aim was to find a vehicle that could traverse the difficult conditions found in the Falkland Islands to come into service in the British Army. Following this competition and enduring trials, over 200 of the much-loved ATMPs came into service to the British Army. You'll become familiar with this vehicle through further parts of this presentation. The key characteristics of a high-mobility, stable-depending, load-carrying platform, Supercat started to develop a larger four- and six-wheel drive vehicle. This DNA continued to pull through with the development of the high-mobility transporter, both 4x4 and 6x6. The first HMTs were developed for the UK Special Forces in 2003 as a replacement programme for the Land Rover Pinky and have since supported Tier 1 SF units globally. In 2006, recognising the capability of this type of vehicle, the UK MOD ordered the first batch of enhanced armoured HMTs, or Jackals as we know them, as part of the UOR commitment to Afghanistan. Continuous development of these early enhancements of armour and capability led to further UK orders of the Jackal 2, 2A and Coyote variants into the UK MOD. Over the last 15 years, the base HMT platform has continued to be developed with capability gains in armour, capability and load carrying characteristics. We'll now see a short film of the HMT doing what it does best. As I explained before, the HMT is a constantly evolving capability tailored to the individual operator's requirement. 
For those of you who are familiar with the UK range of HMTs, you'll have noticed a number of enhancements on our latest export vehicle behind me. I will now walk around the vehicle highlighting some of the options and characteristics of this platform. Starting at the front of the vehicle, you can see we've got an enhanced load ca capability carrying the sandboards, snow chains and other Pioneer equipment. We're retaining the um, high quality front winch with about a seven and a half ton straight line pull and with bush bars and bumper enhancements. If we move around the side of the vehicle, you can see this vehicle currently isn't fitted with a smoke discharger, but the option and cabling is there. Moving down the side of the vehicle, the cab has got um, a pleak armour that covers you from both blast and ballistic in, in the cab area and down the sides, and it would lead me on to the wheel station. Do as you notice, this wheel is a little bit different from the UK variant. It's got a split rim, central tyre inflation system um, running a run flat, enabling you to adjust the tyre pressure from inside the cab and drive the vehicle safely with a punctured wheel. It retains the same unique suspension system as all the other vehicles, a horizontally opposed airbag system giving a very smooth ride, um, damped on all corners with independent suspension. Moving down through the vehicle, got the same sort of layout, the same enhanced mid-engined automatic transmission space frame chassis running in this configuration to a six-wheel drive vehicle. This vehicle is fitted with a, a, a diff enhancement. This has got a locking diff. We also offer the limited slip diff and various different options, giving you the complete mobility, all of which is controlled by the driver in the cab. We just open the side door. We can see the stowage solutions for ammunition varying from different calibers, the blast seating for the third and fourth person, the weapon ring, which can be fitted with uh, variable different weapons and stowage and equipment around this area. Move that down, further load carrying characteristics, um, carrying the fuel cans, ammunition, a racks, all of these that can be varied to the individual customer's requirement. Moving down to the bottom of the vehicle, as I said, the DNA runs right through the fleet. Um, as you'll have seen in our brochures, we call this vehicle the Extender. This vehicle has got the capability of converting from a 4x4 to a 6x6. Basically, the chassis ends at the point of a 4x4, then it is an interface plate and a connecting prop shaft and a number of connectors that enables you to put on the Extender, which is the third axle, making it 6x6 enhancing your capability, giving you more load space and longer range. It's quite a simple task, can be carried out by two or three technicians in about two hours. We'll now have a look at a short time-lapse film of this operation taking place. As you have just seen, the foundations of the HMT are a mid-engined, all-wheel drive, space frame, forward control vehicle. This modular layout provides the ultimate flexibility for the conversion you have just seen. To complete roll changes to the fitting of a rear module or enclosed cab as required. This base chassis can be produced with many different roll modules, giving the capability of troop carrying, logistic, ambulance, gun limmer, command and control. Each of these modules can be paired with even an open architecture or a closed cab. A good example of this module approach can be seen with a lightweight recovery vehicle. The lightweight recovery vehicle utilizes modular approach, providing incredible recovery capability from the same base vehicle. 
This approach not only maintains the characteristics of the HMT, but also reduces the training burden normally associated with a small fleet. You can see a short video of the vehicle performing much like its base platform around our track. As we just described, this modular approach lends itself to this type of vehicle. As you can see, the same DNA threading through with exactly the same wheels, wheel station and suspension and chassis. The most obvious change, this vehicle's got a cab on it because of the requirement to be winterized and waterproofed, keeping the inhabitants and the equipment both safe and dry and warm in the winter. This has got ballistic and blast protection integrated into the cab and running back through the same DNA. We open the doors, quite an unusual door configuration. This was developed through a number of simulations and actual blast trials. It found that the doors retained their position better um, during our trials. That's why the door opens outwards. If you look into the cab, there are four blast attenuating seats, one for the driver and commander, the two tradesmen, and then two jump seats for the, the crew of the vehicle that you've recovered. Moving down through the vehicle, as I said, this vehicle was designed with the intent of being used by the Royal Marines, so it has to operate in water up to 1.5 metres with a splash of 2 metres. Um, as we all know, the easiest way to waterproof something is to get it up high or put it in a box. That's exactly the same de design intent we've done. We've moved a lot of the electronics and delicate pieces that were normally on the HMT up into these high parts or put the delicate electronics into a box so they're in the back of the cab so this vehicle as i said completely unprepared can drive in the sea up to about there moving further back on the same theme of the modularity the rear piece we call the recovery hamper as you can see a number of cupboards or bins running back through with a special equipment needed to support this vehicle's job we move to this main bin we call this the through bin. For obvious reasons, it goes through and out the other side. The main design intent of having a through bin, as you can see, it's got a spare wheel in it. If the bin only opened on one side, 50-50 chance the door would be on the wrong side. Large bin used for recovery equipment and personal equipment and special tools, as you can see. The next bin moving back through the vehicle is much of the recovery equipment. So these are the specialist pieces of equipment that are used to connect this vehicle to all other vehicles in its group to pick up, recover or drag. As you can see in this compartment, we have a number of controls, both manual hydraulic controls to operate the equipment on the back and a remote control. These are for lessons learned on other vehicles where you get technical difficulties with just having a remote control. We've got a mechanical override so all the special to roll equipment can be operated by the crew using levers. So moving around to the back of the vehicle, you'll see this is the most of the special to roll equipment. Due to the nature and the job of this vehicle is to recover, tow or lift up a broken one. Um, all the exciting stuff is at the rear. We've got a recovery jib and a fold out boom that connects onto the vehicles to lift it up. We've got a directable winch around a pulley that can be used to lift small items or to winch vehicles that are stuck. We've got some ground anchors that can be hydraulically driven into the ground to give anchorage for the winch. The winch gives a 10 tonne straight pull or a two to one of 20 tonne, allowing you to winch casualties out with sufficient anchorage to hold the vehicle to stop you getting pulled in. 
Also, you can see a number of interfaces for airlines and electrical connections, so we can control the brakes and equipment of the vehicle we're towing, or it can be used for special to roll tools and equipment out the back of the vehicle. Welcome back. I hope you really enjoyed that. Thank you so much, Roger, for talking through the HMT. We've got some great questions coming in, so please keep those questions coming in and we'll respond to you, as I said, at the end of the show. Now over to Jim, who'll be talking about our next generation hybrid HMT. I'm Jim McKetney. I'm one of the principal project engineers here at Supercat, and this is the HMT vehicle, which has been our core product for over 20 years. As part of the ongoing continuous product development on the HMT vehicle, we've naturally been looking at electric and hybrid drivetrains. As well as doing our own internal development of that, we've just been contracted to do a, a concept demonstrator as part of the PMETS programme with NP Aerospace to work in collaboration with Magtech to produce a hybrid uh, demonstrator vehicle of the HMT. So the configuration that's been chosen for this hybrid demonstrator is a series hybrid. Um, we maintain the engine in its same position, although we've changed it out from a six-cylinder uh, Cummins engine to the four-cylinder variant. That gives us a bit more space inside the engine bay to uh, package some of the other electronic components um, that we need for the hybrid drive. The drive is then provided to the wheels by four independent motor gearboxes developed by Magtech. Uh, that drives the wheels through the drive shafts and the reduction hubs that we normally have fitted to the, the vehicle, which gives us the torque multiplications and the power we need. This gives us a lot of power because we've got four large motors in there, which gives us a good drivability, uh, high performance. Um, and the battery has been sized so that we can have a, 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 a good amount of silent running capability. Going forwards, we would look at developing that platform or that configuration, depending on user profiles. So the amount of silent running that may be required, exportable power, um, increased vehicle performance would all be factors that would come into that to to specify that configuration. There may also be other um, situations where actually a parallel hybrid system is more applicable um, and so we're investigating those options as well. The beauty with these electronic uh, or electric drivetrain systems is that it also makes it much easier to incorporate autonomous drive or optionally manned drive systems uh, in the future such as we have done on the hybrid ATMP platform. So the technologies that we're learning from that platform and the technologies that we're learning from the hybridization of the HMT are two things that we can bring brought together in the future to potentially make an optionally manned or an autonomous HMT vehicle as well. Thank you so much, Jim. So this leads me to say that we've got a final little video for you today, a great treat from the British Army, demonstrating our vehicles in action on a training session. Welcome back. I hope you've really enjoyed our featured presentation today. We have just had one question come in regarding our email address. Just to let you know, if you do have any que additional questions, it's info-uk at supercat.com. Now, I welcome Roger to the floor we've, um, today. So we've just had some great questions. Uh, one question that's actually come in is, uh, can any of the enhancements seen in the video be retrofitted to the UK? A very interesting question, Nikki. I'm assuming the audience has seen I was stood in front of our latest export variant. And as shown, it's considerably different to the current UK vehicle. 
Many of the enhancements could be retrofitted or reverse engineered onto the current UK vehicle, um, giving enhanced capability, protection or mobility. Um, a few of those be the, the differentials, the central tyre inflation system, which could be retrofitted. Although they're not directly bolt-on systems, um, all the components there with slight modification could be fitted, because the whole theme of the presentation I tried to give earlier was that the DNA passes from the first generation of the vehicle right through yeah. to the export. So a lot of the parts can be upgraded through the sort of PDS or continuous development of the product. Okay, oh, interesting, brilliant, thank you. Um, also, another question's come in. Can the UK HMT be converted from a 4x4 to a 6x6? Um, again, this is a, a sort of capability that was developed from the, for, the start of the vehicle, actually. Um, it was offered to the UK at the very inception of this product, um, but the UK, due to sort of purchasing and funding streams, decided to buy the 6x6, as the Coyote, as they call it, or the 4x4, as, as the jackal. So the, the engineering was always there. It was not something that was selected by the UK MOD at the time. Um, we, when we further developed the jackal 2 and the 2A, uh, made the rear of the vehicle available to accept the extender variant. So in answer to the question, the jackal 2 and the 2As could be converted to the 6x6 by the same means as the extender by, by the time-lapse video you saw with slight modifications and upgrades, obviously. So the capability would be there for the UK to expand their fleet of 6 by 6s Okay, okay, that's great, that's interesting. And then uh, one final question. Could uh, Jackal 1 be fitted with two crew seats in the rear? Um, again, um, this is a question that I've been posted before, particularly by the Royal Marines have now embraced the Jackal 1. Um, they find it particularly difficult to carry out a few tasks with only a three-man crew because as you can imagine once you deploy one or two persons on the floor the vehicle then is um, unattended or the weapon station is not able to be manned. Um, we have concept, well drawn up solutions to adapt the Jackal, Jackal 1 into a more like a Jackal 2 formation which would involve changing the hamper giving you the better weapon station on the top, the elevated position and two further blast seats in the rear. Um, we would probably judge that as a, a Jackal 1.5. It would be an upgrade, but mm -hmm. it would be a massive capability gain for particularly the commandos and the air assault who are using the Jackal 1. Okay, that's great. Well, thanks ever so much. Really appreciate what you've done today, Roger. Well, that's it f from us. Um, just like to say, I hope you've really enjoyed the show. I'd like to thank the crew and the cast for all their efforts today, especially under the coronavirus restrictions that we've all been working on, that we've managed to bring you this. Don't forget that the LRV will be going out at 10.30. It's still not late, too late to register. And also the electric ATMP is also going out at 2 p.m. Supercat.com forward slash news events forward slash events. That's it from me. I'll welcome you back later on today.